Very interesting. Uh, we're going to talk about the the grad program in a while, uh, just now. But um, your your qualifications, you have a, a Master of Science um, in Mathematics. Almost. Almost. Oh, almost. Almost. <laughs> almost. Oh, is that something that you're still busy um, with? Yes. Um, I'm on the verge of just finishing up sort of my final draft now. And yeah, so hopefully, hopefully that's going to go well. Oh, hopefully, yeah. No, it, it definitely will. Uh, but you have a BSc honors in mathematics, and you have a bachelor's yes. degree, um, in in uh, which was a triple major in mathematics, corporate finance, and investments and marketing. Just yes. your your journey. I mean, after from what you have studied, your journey into being into getting into being a quant. How did you get there in the first place? If I must be honest, it's something I never knew about until uh, uh, it was time to look for a job, if I must be honest. Um, so I started my journey off uh, in engineering. I really did not enjoy it. Um, you know, so then I was like, you know what, the math is fun. Let me let me just go and study math. You know, that's, that's what I enjoy. That's what I'm very comfortable. That's what I'm happy with. And so I picked up, you know, marketing and corporate finance along the way because I need points. Uh, and I actually, you know, ended up really enjoying those subjects as well. Uh, but I mean, you know, my passion's always been with mathematics. Uh, yeah, so after that, I headed on and did my honors and it was sort of halfway through honors, I'm like, look, I need to find a job for next year. So I just started researching careers. I started having a look at, you know, what I can actually do in the market. I mean, and at the time, I, I think I was really, expecting to find something you know in finance slash marketing more than anything else because again i didn't know that these careers for mathematicians ever existed and i think it was i think nedbank dropped off a flyer in in, in our in the, in the study room one day and i had a look at it and i'm like oh this is interesting and then i think a day or two later um, someone came and had a talk with the class and I was like, oh, this sounds a lot more interesting than everything I've been looking at. And that's when I started my research, uh, you know, into the, you know, the, the field of a quant and realizing, you know, you, there's data scientists and actuaries and all these other things. I'm like, no, nope, this, is, this is interesting to me. And I'll give it a shot. And I started applying. And that's when I realized, you know, it's not just NetBank, but it's Standard Bank, Capitec, Absa, it's everywhere um, that actually needs quads. Um, you know, mostly within the bank, you know, with, within the banking sector, uh, you do every now and then find roles, um, you know, sort of um, in, within other financial institutions. But yeah, so I started applying. I think I applied for every single entry-level quant role that I could think of and you know I'm just I think I'm very lucky and very happy that at the end of it I managed to you know to end up in NetBank and yeah I think that was probably one of the best um, decisions I've ever made and yeah. So let's talk about the graduate program um, and I, I know with graduate programs in most cases there is this rotations right but let's talk specifically about the graduate program uh, being a quant, like the quant career program. You know, I know people rotate through, there is business um, banking, there is credit risk, like you said, there is personal loans and unsecure funding, I mean, unsecure lending and stuff like that. Just, you know, briefly, uh, you know, elaborate on the graduate program. Sure. So I think, look, I, I might be wrong because, I mean, it's been a long time since I've looked into graduate programs, but at the time that I applied, NetBank was the only rotational based program. Um, a lot of the others sort of put you within a specific team and that's where you work. Whereas here with NetBank, I really like the fact that you could sort of choose different business areas. You know, no one was saying, hey, go work there. You know, I had an ability to say, look, here's my interest. This is the career path I'm looking for. Let me try go down this stream. Oh, I don't like this. Let me try something else. And I think the idea behind it is that you don't know what you don't know. Um, it's the same like when we came from high school. 
we went to university, we said, yes, I want to be an engineer, I want to be a doctor or a lawyer. You come to first year and you realize it's terrible and you hate it and you want to do something else with your life. It's the same thing happens when you get to work. You have an idea of, oh, this is, this is the job for me, but you don't really know what it is or what it entails or how you actually do it. And you don't really know that until you actually start doing it. So I think that's, you know, the whole idea behind it is that you have this opportunity to make mistakes. Because if you pick something and you really don't like it, you have your sort of two years to sort of try and find, you know, sort of something else where your passion actually lies. And, you know, the different roles are very different. There's a lot of similarities. There's a lot of, in terms of soft and technical skills, there's a lot of overlap. But the work is actually quite different. Um, and I think a lot of the time it's also finding the right team that you want to work with. Because you can have the best job in the world, but if you hate the people that you're working with, you're not going to have a good time. You know, so it's really a great opportunity to, to learn and explore within a safe environment. And I think at the same time, you're also not doing baby work. Um, the work is very much real. You definitely feel like you're a part of the team and you're actually making contributions, um, you know, to the banking and financial sectors. You know, a lot of the projects that you work on are real projects. They're not sort of just dumbed down versions of things to keep you busy while you figure out what's really going on. You know, um, it's real projects that have real impacts on business. And I, that's something I really appreciate because the, um, the skills that you learn within there, I think you, you're not going to get anywhere else. You know, and in addition to that, you know, there's a lot of, you know, training in terms of soft skills. Um, there's training in terms of technical skills, you know, just making sure that your sort of your programming, your business knowledge and um, you know, any other technical skills that might be lacking you. So up, or up to scratch. And it's a great networking opportunity because you get to work with, um, you know, not just quants, but senior managers and executives from all different clusters within the bank. So, I mean, you, you walk out of that grad program knowing a lot of people and building a lot of connections along the way. Um, honestly, it is probably, you know, not probably, it is the thing that really jumps out of my career. Um, you know, you, you walk out of that NetBank grad program and honestly, you can do whatever you want. You can go anywhere, you can work anywhere, uh, you know, not just locally, internationally. Um, international banks are, you know, stepping in, unfortunately, and scooping up our people like, like nothing. Um, it's really a good experience. It really is. So uh, probably there is a student who's going to watch this. Uh, probably they're doing maths or from any of the analytical sciences and they want to be a quant as well. They want to get into the quant space. And obviously there's going to be a series of interviews. There's going to be, I don't know uh, how you guys do it because I know with some uh, professions, you find that there is an interview and then there are some case studies uh, whereby people are given case studies and then they have to now think and there are some assessments, psychometric tests and all of those type of things. How does it go in, in, in the quant space? Like generally, of course. I think it's, it is going to vary from institution to institution. Um, I think, you know, generally speaking, you know, there'll be an interview. Um, there, there's generally, a, you know, a case study. There's generally some sort of psychometric assessment um, and then possibly a, a second interview as well. Um, there'll probably be, a, no, there, there probably will be a second interview. Um, and in my experience, they're, they're kind of split. So sometimes you have a technical interview where, you know, the conversation is more about your your technical skills, um, your problem solving skills and things like that. And then sometimes you have, uh, you know, the other side is, you know, interviews where they're more just trying to get to know you. Uh, who are you as a person? How do you think? Um, what's your personality like? Are you going to fit in with the team? That type of thing. Um, I think that's, you know, sort of a, a general uh, idea of what the process is going to be. When you come to graduate programs, it might be a little bit more involved. 
Um, there might just be a few extra assessments. Um, but honestly, it is going to vary. And I think that is one of the things that you kind of need to get used to is that you need to be ready for anything and everything. Um, for the most part, you know, the structure is sort of the same, like how, how I explained, but you can't guarantee that. Uh, so sometimes you just got to learn to roll with the punches and I think I think the more interviews you do, the more comfortable you're going to get with them. To be honest, the first one's probably going to be bad. But as long as you learn from it and, you know, you, you, you fi- figure out sort of you know, where your flaws are, what you're doing wrong, and you learn from it and build on it, eventually you're going to get very comfortable with doing them. You're going to eventually get used to the type of assessments that will get thrown at you. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that's, you know, that's one of the other things. So you mustn't feel like you're dumb or something if you don't make it through the interviews or the assessments, whatever the case is. It just mean you're probably just not used to them. And if you do them three, four, five times, you eventually, you, know, you start seeing some sort of patterns. Sure. Yeah. 